This first lobster catch is a great example of a dug down catch, which is one of the easiest scenarios. Here you can clearly see disturbed sediment at the base of the boulder or around the shallow den the lobster created for shelter. These dug dens are never very deep, which gives me the chance to just reach right in and grab him. Although this guy was clearly short, I take advantage of the situation to practice catching, and then I remember I can use him to help catch another one, which is demonstrated in the next catch. So I hold on to the baby in one hand and swim off to look for another one. So here I found a keeper in a standard rock den, which is just a crevice in a rock that the lobster uses as a den. But many times these crevices go back further than I can reach, so I try to entice the lobster out by using his instincts to defend the den from other lobster. So by challenging him with a small lobster, he comes right out to scare away the baby I am holding in his face. I immediately drop the baby lobster when he's far out enough to grab his carapace behind the head, which disables him from being able to pinch me. I leave the baby, measure and bag the keeper, and move on. So this next one you can see is antenna sticking out of the crevice, which is how I identify about half of the ones that I find. I see if I can grab him quickly before it scoots to the back of the den and is inaccessible. I fail to do that, so I check around to see if there's another access hole, which there was not. But last resort technique is to cloud up the water in his den and make it uncomfortable and reduce visibility. I then search the surrounding area for more lobster. I find the next one nearby, and this next den is an example of an ideal den with two entrances, so I can reach one arm in each hole and prevent escape. Lobster in dens with two entrances under these small boulders is nearly always a 100% catch rate. This one was a short, so I immediately let it go and check back on the den I had silted up and I see the lobster had done what I was hoping for, and I grab it just as it nearly escapes back into the deep den. This method will get the lobster to come all the way out of the den about a third of the time I do it, and the ones that don't respond to this method within a few minutes I give up on and go find more. This next catch is definitely my least favorable method of catching, but it's definitely worth a show because many deep dens require this method. The first thing I do is look around to see if there's a second entrance to its den, which there was, but I could not reach both arms in or scare it out of its den. Next I try the silt method and wait with no luck, so I had to resort to reaching in with one arm and trying to grab its claws without getting pinched which is high risk with lobster over 3 pounds because they can crush a finger bone. So I silt up the water to take away his vision, and then I force him into a corner and carefully grab both of his claws with one hand and try to pull him out. This catch is another ideal situation where one lobster made a den under a small rock with two entrances. 
So again, I reach behind him to see if he will leave the den, then grab it with the other hand. I thought it would be a keeper, but unfortunately it was not, and one claw broke off while catching it. But he will grow a new one back to full size within a couple of years, and one I catch later was healthy with only one claw, so he will be okay. So this one is definitely a keeper, but uh, he had a very deep den under a large boulder that I uh, reached my whole arm back and couldn't feel him. So I tried for a couple minutes, but ended up giving up on him and moving on. This next one I could tell was a keeper but also had a deep crevice den with only one entrance. So I see if I can use a green crab to elicit a defensive walk out of his den, similarly to using the small officer. I'm not sure if that's what did it, but it did come out far enough for me to quickly grab it. And this individual was a keeper and had lost its crusher claw, but was in the process of growing a new one. Yes, that did hurt, but luckily it uh, slid off my finger and he ended up just holding on to my glove. But I did have a little bruise the next day. What happened next was a pretty unique encounter, so I took the opportunity to capture it on film. I see striper very often when I dive, but it is unusual for them to be this calm and curious, and I was surprised he stuck around for a while, circling me and watching. I found this little guy when I was filming after I stopped lobstering, and I tried to catch him when I didn't have my gloves on, but I ended up giving up on it. This was a lobster pot that I saw in the area, and I could see green crabs feeding on the fresh fish that was in there, but this just goes to show you that just because you have a lobster pot in the area doesn't mean you're going to catch all the lobster. This clip is from the same day and is a good example of a more typical striper encounter. The other creatures in these waters deserve a look too, so relax and observe the environment these lobsters call home. Thanks for watching and please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel where you can watch these videos on big screen in HD. I will be making more similar videos, so stay tuned and I hope this video helps someone out there catch more lobster, so let me know if you try these with success and good luck out there.